this is certainly a blast from the past. An old favorite of mine has made a reappearance in 2018 in the form of this new die-cast Iron Man Mark IV from Hot Toys. With the re-release of one of the largest and kick-ass accessories produced by the brand, this release, specifically the Mark IV, holds a lot of importance for me since the original version was one of the first Hot Toys figures I'd ever come across. Mind you, several years ago I had no idea who or what Hot Toys was. Then in 2011 I got my first Iron Man with this Mark IV, which of course impressed me to no end. I even took it with me during one of my hiking trips, as you can see here from pictures I took of that climb. The figure furthered my interest and funneled my money into more Hot Toys figures. Since that time, I've always held the Mark IV in high regard because of the initial impressions I had with it, and of course, the big nostalgia factor. So here we are now with a new version with a bit of bulk and a glossy new paint job and finish. And oh baby, it looks extraordinary. It still retains the basic designs of the 2011 version, but with more luster, giving it a blockbuster look that's anything but lackluster. For me, it's kind of like finding my old used sports car I drove in my college days, but this one is brand new, a bit more decked out, and has a hot factory finish shine. One that makes you wary of parking it next to others and keeping it in a nice, safe, closed off space. But I'm not gonna do that with this beauty, especially since it comes with this fabulous and enormous suit up gantry. Now there's a lot to go over with the figure itself, but there's more so since you've got this cool mechanical base that's articulated and detailed to the max. To hold this ton of mechanical majesty is this big blocky box that's not too shabby and is stylistically illustrated showing Iron Man and the gantry. It's a very simple illustration, but a dramatic one at that using really basic colors and emphasizing the machine attributes of not only the Mark IV, but the suit-up gantry as well. I think out of all the Hot Toys figures, it always seems that the Iron Man packaging as of late is some of the best they've put out. Let's first start with the Mark IV itself and the classic Iron Man head. You've got the well-known helmet with the light-up features intact, and a bit of some weathering and battle scarring, which to me is more apparent with this release as you can see. It's one of the most well-known helmets in the Marvel Universe, and is an accurate depiction of the helmet he wore in the movie Iron Man 2. The light-up features are activated by removing the magnetic mask and top, and activating this switch. Also included is this Tony Stark head. Anyone who's ever got a Hot Toys Iron Man knows that they don't play around when it comes to the likeness of Robert Downey Jr. And to no surprise, it's a very well done mold that looks like Stark. It's very similar, if not the exact same mold as the one that came with the Diecast Mark V from earlier this year. You also get a collar that makes it easier to blend the neckline to the suit. Both heads have a good range of motion, moving from side to side and up and down. The torso looks just as I remembered it, except it and the whole figure is a bit more bulky, giving it a bit more heft and better proportions overall than its predecessor. The chest can be removed to show the mechanical workings and a better look at the arc reactor whose light is activated by a switch on the back. The detail and mold of the inner workings has changed and it's for the best with a bit more going on, with more colors including a nice deep black base color. There's a bit more silver mixed in as well, and you've got these gold panels that look pretty nice along the top and bottom of the chest. The same changes are also found within the air flap components. It's basically a continuation of the new changes implemented into this new version of the Mark IV. 
The air flaps for the most part function the same way where you can lift four panels up to simulate Iron Man in flight. Like all Iron Men, you can pull the torso to allow greater movement from ab crunches and back leans to side to side movement. The arms have a good range of motion thanks to this shoulder piece which shifts up allowing you to move the arm to higher positions. The figure has double jointed elbows and peg swiveled hands. The legs can shift to the side and move back and forth with double jointed knees and peg swiveled feet. You've also got a behind the scenes feature found at the rear of the lower legs, showing what's going on behind all that metal. Like the chest and back configurations, the details are upgraded and look pretty nice. Although I wish you could shift the cover plates higher so you can see the mechanics better. Hot Toys did get rid of a feature on the figure and that's the retractable countermeasure dispensers found at the hips. In the original, you could push the circular hips and they would protrude out just a bit. Accessories include three pairs of hands, you've got a pair of fists, a pair of blasting hands which you can use in conjunction with the light up features. You turn the lights on by using this switch found at the bicep of the figure. And they're supposed to be on. And this is where I have my major gripes. I've seen other reviews on this version of the Mark IV, and a few of them have really underpowered hand blast lights. And these are batteries I just put in. My other Iron Man Hot Toys figures from this year don't have this problem. What's worse is I'm unable to open the other compartment for the right hand blast, because the screw is airtight. It's like someone nailed it in there. I'm not getting in there unless I break that cover. I've heard other people have problems with battery container screws being way too tight, but this is my first time running into it. The final pair of hands are the articulated ones, which really come in handy, especially if you want Tony to hold some of the goodies he got from the donut shop he stopped at in the Iron Man 2 movie. You've got a delicious donut that Tony could be munching on in between his punching sessions. A donut box that's just as flimsy as the original and just as empty. One donut. One. And brand new to the figure, a coffee cup. In all seriousness, I actually like these sugary add-ons since it fits in line with that memorable donut shop scene in the movie. And honestly, they look good with the figure and give them a relaxed, taking it easy kind of look, especially with those sunglasses. This one is another accessory that was passed down to this new version of the Mark IV, and one that I really liked. The spectacles have a red and black checkered frame. They look pretty cool on him, giving him a quirky and edgy kind of look that doesn't clash with the armor, since the red basic tone of the glasses is similar to the suit's main color. Tony is basically spicing it up with some killer shades. But this Iron Man isn't all sugar and spice, since he could dice it up with the best of the best with small but explosive rockets. You can attach a total of four rocket propelling armor plates to each arm. These are more detailed than the previous version and better colored, with an oversized rocket projecting from the top of the wrist. You also get these magnetic connecting shoulder rocket mounts. I believe these are new to this version of the figure. And they're way better than the mounts on previous Iron Man figures where you had to open the shoulders and fish those out. Here you just remove a magnetized shoulder piece and pop the rockets on. And as if he needed any more rockets, these shoulder pieces lift to provide Iron Man with six more rockets. And now ladies and gentlemen, we come to the icing on the cake, the suit up gantry. I did not have the pleasure of getting the original, but I could guess what my reaction would have been. This is f 
amazing. I hope you enjoy the review. I'm Otaku Surf, and I'll see you around. Okay, let's get down to the nitty and gritty of this awesome accessory, which was briefly featured in the Iron Man 2 movie. The gantry system enables Tony to take off, assemble, and store the Mark IV suit. This is a very mechanical and automated looking contraption. It's very much like something you would see at a car factory, with servos, pistons, cables, and arms working together to create the next classic machine. With some wear and tear on the surface, giving the whole apparatus a well-used, but used well look. The base itself is made up of a black checkered plastic piece which separates into segments that can lift and shift, surrounding the center with nice texturized curves. There is also a few lights that surround the center of the base and are activated by a switch found at the side. There are a total of nine arms which vary in size and serve different purposes from removing Iron Man's arm plates, removing the chest plate, removing the leg plates, to the removal of the helmet. All of the arms are attached to the base through holes found throughout the stand. Each of the arms, especially the larger ones, have some wide ranges of posability. The arm extraction units have articulation, including rotation found at the base, joints at the midpoint, and the head can also extend from the front and rear. There's also some tiny arms found at the end of the arm. Thankfully, these are made out of plastic, so you're not going to scratch up the figure during entry. The helmet extraction unit has rotation found at its elevated upper base and joints found at the arm. It ends with a claw with several fingers that are articulated and that can hold the Iron Man helmet. There's also an arm to remove the chest plate, which is magnetized so you can easily connect with no problem. Opposite that arm is another unit whose purpose is to remove the back plates. The rest of the arms are units to extract the leg plates from the front and the rear. And there you have it, the Hot Toys die-cast Iron Man Mark IV and the suit-up gantry. Aside from the aggravating problems I had with the hand lights, this Mark IV is an absolute step up from the first release. It's very noticeable with the hot off the factory floor finish to the accessories. And that's not to mention the gantry, which is its own thing but made all the more better when you put it together with a classic machine. I'm Otaku Surf, and I'll see you around.